Welcome, ladles and jelly spoons, to the realm of terror and confusion, where reality and nightmare intertwine, and your mind is pushed to its limits. Have you been watching Richard York's Wargaming, where no war game remains unplayed again? Today, we delve into the world of Silent Hill 3 in this month's 20th anniversary retrospective review. A game that challenges your senses and emotions in a way that few others can. From the haunting music and the disturbing sound sound effects, to the grotesque creatures and the twisted environments. Silent Hill 3 immerses you in a nightmare that you won't forget anytime soon. So join us as we explore the depths of this horror masterpiece, dissect its mechanics and unravel its mysteries. But beware, for once you enter the orbital broadcast bunker, Britain's first and only airborne subterranean studio, don't you know? There is no turning back, so strap in and hold tight and let the retro review begin. Silent Hill 3 is a 2003 survival horror video game developed by Team Silent, a group within Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo. The game was published by Konami. Hit the lever. Oh dear, it's, it's one of those videos. Jules, Jules, put Nipper to bed. This video has turned into utter filth. Again. Originally released for the PlayStation 2, the third installment in the Silent Hill series and a direct sequel to the first Silent Hill game, it follows Heather, a teenager who becomes entangled in the machinations of a town's cult which seek to revive a malevolent deity. A port for Microsoft Windows was released in October of the same year and a remastered high definition version was released as part of the Silent Hill HD collection for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in 2012. Initially planned as a on-rails shooter, Silent Hill 3 was developed in parallel with another installment in the series, Silent Hill 4 The Room. Ah, that would come out in uh, 2004. Following the slow sales of Silent Hill 2 in Japan, the game draws inspiration from horror movie Jacob's Ladder and the works of Stephen King. Silent Hill 3 enjoyed critical and commercial success, with more than 300,000 copies sold by November of 2003. Praised for its presentation, including graphics, audio and environmental design, the game's horror elements and themes continue from past installments, but it was also criticised for its short length, camera and gameplay mechanics. Right, now did you know that the game's plot is loosely in the inspiration for the 2012 film Silent Hill Revelations 3D? <laughs> Silent Hill 3 is a survival horror game that puts the player in control of Heather, a teenager who wakes up from a nightmare in a shopping mall and must make her way home whilst navigating between reality and the more gruesome supernatural Otherworld. Gameplay in Silent Hill 3 closely follows that of its predecessors, with third person combat, exploration and puzzle solving elements. Players can adjust the difficulty of both combat and puzzles separately, with notable differences between the medium and hard levels of puzzle difficulty. For example, a puzzle on the medium level Level requires a simple pattern recognition, whilst the same puzzle on the hard level demands knowledge of Shakespearean plays to solve. Heather's exploration is aided by a flashlight and a radio, with the latter crackling when monsters are nearby, a staple of the series. Throughout the game, Heather can collect health restoratives such as energy drinks and first aid kits. She can collect beef jerky to distract monsters and a variety of weapons to fight them off, including firearms and melee weapons. She can also use blocking and sidestep manoeuvres to evade enemies. Additionally, Heather updates her map with notes on locked doors, inaccessible areas and potential puzzle clues. Although the floor plans for the environments are mostly consistent between reality and the other world, certain areas become inaccessible, with barriers or bottomless gulfs appearing in the streets. The game also offers a range of unlockable weapons and costumes. You 
have entered the dark and eerie depths of the orbital broadcast bunker, Britain's first and only airborne subterranean studio, where games await to be uncovered and facts are revealed by Pat. Hi. Game's protagonists right out of the mission were designed to be a departure from previous Silent Hill protagonists and was intended to be more relatable and grounded as a character. Brave the horrors that lurk in the shadows and subscribe to our channel now. Don't be afraid to hit the bell icon to receive notifications of our latest videos for only by facing your fears can you uncover the truth. Join us on this journey through the unknown and together let's discover what lies beyond the fog. Uh, it, it's probably Mr B from Mr B's ukulele channel. Team Silent, a production group within Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo who's responsible for creating Silent Hill 3. The development of the PlayStation 2 version began in 2001, shortly after the release of Silent Hill 2, and was conducted almost simultaneously with the creation of another Silent Hill title that was meant to take the series in a different direction and not be part of the main numbered series. Originally known as Room 302, this eventually evolved into Silent Hill 4 The Room and became integrated into the main series. The development team for Silent Hill 3 consisted of around 40 people, including the core team from the previous instalment and some new members, whilst a smaller group of Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo staff later developed a Windows port of the game. Silent Hill 3 was not intended to be a direct sequel to the first game. It was planned as an on-rail shooter due to the slow sales and fan criticism of Silent Hill 2 in Japan. This decision resulted in a significant waste of development time and budget, as revealed by Masahiro Ito. The idea was eventually abandoned, although it was later revisited with the release of Silent Hill The Arcade in 2007. As with all Silent Hill games, Silent Hill 3 draws inspiration from various sources, including the horror film Jacob's Ladder, which is referenced in the game through the Bergen Street Station subway platform. The developers also cited horror writer Stephen King as an influence. In creating the characters for the game, the team incorporated references to real-life actors and actresses. For instance, Douglas Carthland was named after Douglas Fairbanks, but his character was modelled after the actors Giancarlo Giannini and Ian Holm. Claudia Wolfe was initially designed as a tattooed holy woman, but eventually she was modelled after Julianne Moore, with the removal of her eyebrows to create a more unsettling appearance. Vincent's name was inspired by the actor Vincent Gallo, and early designs for his character were based on Ethan Hawke. Now, did you know that there were a DVD released on the same day that the game were released? It was called Lost Memories, the art and music of Silent Hill. Now, the DVD included illustrations, sounds, trailers, and production material, and hidden endings from all of the Silent Hill games. All in all, it's about 200 minutes of footage. The disc also included some unlockable hidden bonuses. Before we talk about the plot of this game, this is your official spoiler warning. If you want to experience Silent Hill 3 for yourself, stop here, go and play the game, and then come back. Alternatively, just skip ahead, I'd say about a minute, minute and a half. YouTube used to have a feature that would let us do it for you, but you know, they don't anymore. It opens with Heather's nightmare of being trapped in a derelict amusement park and killed by the roller coaster. She awakens in a burger restaurant, but before she can leave the shopping mall and return home to her father, Harry Mason, private detective Douglas Carthland confronts her, claiming to have information about her birth. Heather evades him and discovers that the mall is mostly abandoned except for monsters. She then encounters Claudia, a mysterious woman who hints that Heather will be instrumental in bringing about paradise on Earth. Heather soon finds herself in the Otherworld version of the mall, monster-filled, bloodstained and decaying, but eventually returns to the original shopping mall where she finds Douglas again, and he confesses that Claudia had hired him to find her, although he denies prior knowledge of the Otherworld or any greater agenda that Claudia might have. Heather leaves the mall and is resolved to take the subway home, and when she returns to her apartment she discovers that her father was murdered on Claudia's orders. Claudia informs her that Harry's murder was out of revenge and to engender hatred in Heather. Before leaving, Claudia tells her that she will be waiting for her in Silent Hill. Intent on killing Claudia, Heather resolves to go to Silent Hill and accepts an offer from Douglas to drive her there. On the journey, Heather learns from a journal left by Harry that she was the baby left to him at the end of the first Silent Hill game because she is the reincarnation of Alessa, the girl originally intended to birth the cult's god, and Claudia intends for her to bring forth that god. Arriving in a seemingly abandoned and fog-shrouded town, Heather sets out to find Leonard in a local hospital. Revealed to be Claudia's abusive father, he intends to dispose of Claudia as the cult's leader and attacks Heather after learning that she is not a member of the cult. 
Heather journeys to a local church via a local amusement park, purportedly at Douglas's request. When Heather arrives at the amusement park, she finds him wounded, having tried to stop Claudia. He considers killing Heather to stop the god from being born, but decides against it. Heather reaches the church and learns that Claudia, who was once Alyssa's childhood friend, intends to bring about the god's birth to remake the world into a paradise. Heather confronts her and vomits out the fetal deity, nourished by her hatred with the aid of a supernatural substance given to her by Harry before his death. Claudia promptly swallows the fetus to Heather's horror and is snatched away by an archangel of the cult to the chapel below, where she is found to have given birth and disappeared. Ah, with Heather presuming her to be dead. Heather then fights and defeats the newly born god before taking a moment to mourn her father. Three endings appear in the game. The normal ending, which is the only ending available on the first playthrough of the game, it sees Heather and Douglas survive, whilst the possessed ending sees Heather kill Douglas, and the revenge ending, which is a joke ending, accessed by performing certain in-game actions, reunites Heather and Harry, and Harry orders a UFO to blow up Silent Hill. He kicked you and made you cry. The memory of his cruelty is forever burned into my mind. Yes, yes, and that's why we need God. What you call faith is not- Voicing our protagonist, Heather Morris, we have Heather Mason, who was a model and a dancer, but more recently she's a marketing director, clearly deciding that the voice acting life was not for her. Douglas Carthland is voiced by Richard Gross, who provides the voice and motion capture. He unfortunately died of liver failure in San Francisco one month before the game's release. Claudia Wolf is voiced by Donna Burke, who has worked on many video games, such as Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain, and Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. She's also an accomplished singer, having released three solo albums, and is known in anime circles as the voice behind the Tokyo Ghoul theme song. Vincent Smith is voiced by Clifford Ripple. It was rumoured that Clifford voiced Jasper Gaines, a somewhat mentally unbalanced man who appears in Silent Hill 4 The Room. But this is untrue. Clifford actually auditioned for Jasper's role twice but didn't get it. This may be because Clifford didn't have enough range and sounded too much like Vincent. Leonard Wolf is voiced by Matt Lagan, who some might know from the game Fatal Frame. The woman in the confession booth is the voice of Lena Hard, who is a ring announcer for mixed martial arts in Japan and is best known for providing the voice of Tekken character Anna Williams. And finally, the Borland Haunted Mansion in narrator is Mike Matheson. Akira Yamaoka composed the soundtrack for Silent Hill 3, which was released in Europe and Japan. Notably, the game's soundtrack features Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, credited as Melissa Williamson, performing most of the vocalised tracks. The song You're Not Here was even included in the PlayStation 2 port of Dance Dance Revolution Extreme and the Silent Hill Experience UMD pack. Additionally, Joe Ramosa provided the chant on the track Prayer and the vocals on the ending theme Hometown. dark depths of the internet, where the shadows linger and the unknown lurks, there is a presence that beckons you forth. Follow the trail of breadcrumbs to the forbidden corners of the web and you will find myself playing a bit of Apex Legends. Okay, here we go. Far and old. I'll flush this cheeky coal stick out. Come on, lad. Oh, I see what you're trying to do there. You're trying to get me to come into your little uh, Thunderdome, are you? Oh, no, no, there he is, there he is. Come here. Come here. Oh, you big bag of bollocks. Here we go. That's how we do it. 
bada bada bing, for the lads like, his face is outside, uh, vodka and snake bites. Dear viewer, do not be afraid, for I offer you a chance to discover the secrets of Kai Mathy's other social media platforms. Venture forth and join us in the abyss, where we can explore the darkness together. Let the journey begin. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok and the book face. And together we shall unravel the mysteries that lie within the shadows. Will you dare join us? You, you two chaps are really getting to the whole Silent Hill aesthetic, aren't you? Silent Hill 3 received praise from critics, achieving 85 out of 100 rating on Metacritic for the PlayStation 2 version and 72 out of 100 rating for the PC version, while some reviewers drew unfavourable comparisons to other combat-based games on the PC platform and criticised the poor gamepad controller support. Others appreciated the general horror and atmosphere of the game. The story and its connection to the first game were well received and the graphics, audio and production value contributed positively to the game's overall atmosphere. However, negative criticism was directed towards the lack of innovation in gameplay, the game's camera and the control system, which some reviewers found disorientating and awkward. The game's length was also criticised, with some claiming it could be beaten in just a few hours. The story was also deemed less compelling compared to previous entries. Despite these criticisms, Silent Hill 3 sold over 300,000 copies by November of 2003 and topped sales charts in Japan upon its release. Ah, oh, here, Keith, do you want to go for a spooky pint? I'll get my spooky coat. Ooh. Uh, I think the ambience might have worn off. Um, but before you click off ladles and jelly spoons, as always, here are the answers to last month's quiz. Again, we asked you to complete the song titles. And first off, we had If I Were a Blackbird, I'd. Of course, the answer was whistle and sing, and I positively will not accept any other suggestions. Mm -hmm. Now, the second song was There's a Rainbow Around My. Now, amazingly, we got quite a number of replies. In fact, about the same as when I asked you to complete the song title Over My Shoulder Goes. And look, it makes it really difficult for us to keep this high reputation of sophisticated comedy that we've never had. So with that, I'll leave you with this. Why are violets blue and not violet? Cheerio, see you next week.